Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless we have yet another example of woke madness infecting an iconic institution the Boy Scouts in America has decided to rebrand as Scouting America in an effort to appear more inclusive here's the ceo sends this really strong message to everyone in America that they can come to this program, they can bring their authentic self, they can be who they are, right, and they, can, they will be welcomed here. For more than a century, the Boy Scouts of America has thrived on principles, emphasizing virtues like courage, service, and leadership for young men. It's changing its name to Scouting America, dropping the gender reference and expanding its teachings to a diverse group of members. How are you identifying your gender? That is that is that is not a term. That's not a matter to us. We don't. We with that is our concern is how to help you grow as an individual. How we okay, how we can best serve you. Gordon Chattels is the communications director for the organization. He says the rebranding acknowledges the more than 180,000 girls who've become part of scouting since they were allowed in five years ago. Additionally, he says the new brand encourages an open door policy to recruiting more diverse members, including from the LGBTQ community. We are opening this up so that we say, really, scouting is for everyone, and we welcome you. God gives a dire warning to anyone who would cause a child to sin, as we read in Matthew 18, 6 and 7. But whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe to the world because of offenses, for offenses must come. But woe to that man by whom the offense comes. Let's bring in senior editor at large of Newsweek, Josh Hammer. Josh, what do you make of this? The CEO says he's doing it to boost membership, but the uh, reception today has not been positive. It's literally in the name of the organization. I, I mean, it is in the name of the organization, the Boy Scouts of America. It should be a necessary condition to be a Boy Scout, to be a boy, to have an XY chromosomal structure, to have all the various physical manifestations of, of, of manhood, the likes of which would have been relatively uncontroversial in this country or in any other country around the world for that matter as recently as probably 10 to 15 years ago or so. The Boy Scouts of America, which traditionally was, if anything, a more conservative organization trying to teach boys how to be men, now they are just trying to kind of tow the line that you have to tow and imbibe all the various tenets of the woke catechism. It makes me really sad, Rita. Obviously, obviously, when you get to the point when, where you are literally just eradicating any differences between male and female, ultimately, what do you stand for as a society? But that really is where the West has fallen to at this point. And finally, this just story was hilarious to me. I mean, hilarious, but sad. But also, we knew it was coming. The Boy Scouts of America, well, they can't be the Boy Scouts anymore. After 114 years, they're now just going to be called Scouting America. What do you reckon? Yeah, what I reckon is that our boys here in America are in real trouble because they, uh, the, the organizations that they have, that they can be taught to be real men and they can be taught that their masculinity is something to be, you know, uh, to, to uphold and something to be proud of and something to be cherished is getting slimmer by the day. Now with, the, of course, the Boy Scouts saying, you know what, it's fine. We're just scouting America. We welcome everyone. We want to be inclusive. Bring us all your trans. Bring us all your LGBT. <laughs> and so... The kids here, the boys here, I have two boys of my own. They are in real trouble here because it, it is getting harder and harder for them to understand that it is okay to be a boy here in America. It's okay to be masculine. It's okay to hold doors mm. open for, for girls and, you know, to go shooting and all of the things that, that boys yeah. are traditionally supposed to enjoy. And it's getting hard for them. Toxic masculinity is an expression that is popular in culture today. Toxic masculinity is perversely applied to masculinity. And when misused, these two ideas, toxic and masculine, are assumed to be one and the same. Toxic masculinity implies that all things masculine are inherently toxic. 
the Bible debunks all notions of toxic masculinity. There is no better example of real manhood than Jesus Christ. Christ's example, as given in the Bible, shows us how to express male traits in a positive way. Jesus was unafraid to show his emotions over the death of Lazarus, as we read in John 11, 35 and 36. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, See how he loved him. Jesus was also willing to chase crooks out of the temple with a whip, as we read in John 2, 13 through 16. Now the Passover of the Jews was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem, and he found in the temple those who sold oxen and sheep and doves, and the money changers doing business. When he had made a whip of cords, he drove them all out of the temple, with the sheep and the oxen, and poured out the changers' money, and overturned the tables. And he said to those who sold doves, Take these things away. Do not make my father's house a house of merchandise. Christ had compassion for others, as we read in Matthew 15, 32, and verses 35 through 37. Now Jesus called his disciples to himself and said, I have compassion on the multitude, because they have now continued with me three days and have nothing to eat. And I do not want to send them away hungry, lest they faint on the way. So he commanded the multitude to sit down on the ground. And he took the seven loaves and the fish and gave thanks, broke them, and gave them to his disciples. And the disciples gave to the multitude. So they all ate and were filled. And they took up seven large baskets full of the fragments that were left. Jesus demonstrated forgiveness. Luke 7, 44-48 Then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I entered your house. You gave me no water for my feet, but she has washed my feet with her tears and wiped them with the hair of her head. You gave me no kiss, but this woman has not ceased to kiss my feet since the time I came in. You did not anoint my head with oil, but this woman has anointed my feet with fragrant oil. Therefore I say to you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven? The same loves little. Then he said to her, Your sins are forgiven. Jesus demonstrated humility. John 13, 12 through 17. So when he had washed their feet, taken his garments, and sat down again, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you say, Well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example, that you should do as I have done to you. Most assuredly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is he who sent greater than he who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. Jesus demonstrated bravery, love, and extreme generosity. John 3, 16 and 17 For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Not only did Jesus give his life to save all of mankind, he endured the most horrendous beating beforehand. Jesus gave everything he had to bring humanity back into right relationship with God, which is the most generous gift of all. On my honor, I will do my best to serve God and my country, to respect authority. Ryan and Elliot Parks recite the oath for Trail Life USA, described as a Christ-centered, boy-focused, character leadership and adventure organization. And I really like being a part of it just because there's, there's a lot of fun, like, I love being outdoors, and I love camping and hiking and kayaking, and there's a lot of that in Trail Life. Instead of a periodic table of elements, trailmen complete what's called a periodic table of advancements. Dozens of skills with the goal of becoming a freedom rangeman. Younger brother Elliot describes trail life's Christian focus. One time we talked about Christ being our cornerstone and how we need to rely on him. And so I thought that, that that's really important. Their troop master is also their father. We ruled out the Boy Scouts. We just did not uh, choose them, mainly because of a lot of decisions that they had been making. Uh, and we just decided that wasn't going to be a good fit for us. We were looking for something that really reinforced 
uh, our beliefs and how we, we read the Bible, how our understanding of God's Word. For years, the Boy Scouts have been mired in controversy that has caused numbers to plummet. Issues ranging from bankruptcy due to lawsuits to opening the Scouts to girls and gay youth and adult leaders to participate. The Boy Scouts uh, kind of lo lost their way. You know, they're an organization that has given us presidents and senators and astronauts and community and civic leaders. They had a magic sauce. They had the magic for how to grow boys into good, strong men. But they began to abandon those traditions uh, through the changes that they made over the last couple of years. And I think the family said, no, we want an organization that understands that boys and girls are different. We want our sons to be raised in an organization that's male focused, that helps them to understand and, and to, to be encouraged to grow into winning and godly men. Why Hancock tells CBN News Trail Life USA has seen a tremendous 70% growth in the last year. And with more than 30,000 trailmen across all 50 states, he's not watering down the Christian emphasis. It's who we are, and it's really what makes us different. If we cease to do that, there's no reason for us to exist. And we also, in our hearts, we want to see the kingdom grow. We want to see boys impacted for Christ. We want to see boys and families making decisions for Christ. And we see that basically on a daily basis. The founder of Trail Life USA's sister organization says frustration over the Girl Scouts direction inspired her to start American Heritage Girls. American Heritage Girls is Christ-centered, which differentiates us from other scouting organizations. We were started in 1995 as a result of the changes in the Girl Scout program. I had been a Girl Scout volunteer for 13 years ministering to girls along that program path. However, when they made a change in the Girl Scout prom promise to no longer mandate an oath to God, it was very concerning to me. She's referring to the asterisk that's now in the Girl Scout promise that reads, on my honor, I will try to serve God. It means members may substitute for the word God in accordance with their own spiritual beliefs. Garibay wanted something stronger. A character development program has to be based on something, morality is involved. And so what would it be based on if God was now removed or allowed to be flexible? And so I tried to make changes locally in the Girl Scouts and also on the national level, but to no avail. And as a result, the Lord called me to start American Heritage Girls. After 26 years, troops now operate in all 50 states with girls taking part in 15 other countries. Like Trail Life USA, American Heritage Girls is unapologetically Christian. Garibay says it just makes sense. It is very important. We always put God first, you know, and our attitude, integrity, everything about the creed and our oath is centered around God and faith and just putting your trust in Him above all else. It's nice because the other girls know Jesus. The faith aspect clearly sets American Heritage Girls and Trail Life USA apart, a critical component in a world competing for the attention of girls and boys. The Bible teaches us not to follow after philosophers and deceivers of the world. As we read in Colossians 2.8, Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. As we watch world events unfold, it is as if we are all watching the same movie. Yet at the same time, Christians and unbelievers are seeing two separate stories. Christians are watching world events unfold, just as the Bible said it would, right before Jesus returns. Christians long for Christ's return, as we are looking forward to the day He rules and reigns as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We look forward to a day when there will be no more lawlessness, a time of peace and harmony with all creation. Unbelievers, on the other hand, are trying to create their own utopian society, where lawlessness runs unchecked and every kind of evil is thought to be good. Christians have been given the Spirit of God as a gift, as we read in 1 Corinthians 2, 12 through 16. Now we have received, not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man, speaking of the unsaved, does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ.
Paul goes on to say this in Galatians 6, 7. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. The unsaved are doing the desires of their father the devil. As we read in John 8, 44. You are of your father the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and does not stand in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar, and the father of it. The reality at the end of these two stories also have different outcomes. The prophet Daniel put it succinctly, And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, some to shame and everlasting contempt. Which do you choose, everlasting life or shame and everlasting contempt? It's up to you, eternity with God or eternity in the lake of fire. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.